Okay, so welcome to your restorative class. Going to do a few poses, concentrating on the upper body, opening the chest. Um, we'll finish with a little bit of an inversion and a nice yoga nidra. So what you'll need for today is uh, a rolled up yoga mat. So if you have a yoga mat that you're on, um, you don't need to use it at the beginning because we'll need it in a rolled up way. Just a fair one and roll it up. So that kind of makes this quite firm, thin sausage uh, shape. So if you had like a foam roller that was quite thin, that could do as well. Um, I've got three cushions here. Um, they'll just help support us. Two of them could be similar or identical. That would be really good. Um, and one is, can be different. Um, I've also got a bolster. So if you don't have a bolster, you could maybe tie two pillows together nice and tight to make it kind of cylindrical. Or you could try putting two pillows into one pillowcase. I've also got a chair. Um, without any wheels on, we'll be using the chair to kind of rest our legs on, um, but you don't want it to kind of slip off your mat. Um, also nice to have a blanket because as you practice restorative yoga, you might feel a bit chilly, you might want to cover yourself up, or you might want to put it over the props if you want extra support. If you've got an eye bag at home, then please feel free to put an eye bag. So we'll start this practice sitting up. So you can sit on a chair. We're just going to do some um, shoulder and neck exercises. You can sit cross legs or something, or you can straddle your bolster. And you just want to make sure that your buttocks are a little bit far, far back, especially if you're in the chair, your feet are flat on the floor. Just finding that natural curve in the lower back, the pubic bone rolling forwards and down, and just rolling the shoulders back and down, lifting the crown of the head up towards the sky. Just finding the natural curves of the spine so that you can sit and you really feel like gravity is holding you. And just gently closing your eyes or lowering your gaze. You can have your hands palms flat on the thighs. This will be a very grounding practice. Restorative is really about using the earth, letting go into the ground. So palms flat really helps you with that. Softening the forehead, releasing the jaw. Crown of the head lifting up while the pelvis sinks down into whatever you're sitting on. Taking some breaths. You don't have to deepen the breath. You don't have to do anything. Just taking some breath and watching yourself as you breathe. Maybe that will encourage the breath to lengthen. Maybe it won't. It doesn't matter. Just watching the breath, sighing or yawning. And just coming into the intention of, of slowing down, really, and it can be quite difficult to suddenly slow down and practice restorative yoga. Often when we're quite frenetic and busy, we know we need it, but it's very hard to access that point of stillness. So just let your breath anchor you. Feel really in connection with that out breath. Every time you breathe out, you feel gravity kind of drawing you down into the earth. And that breath out, feeling that you're letting go of tension, tiredness, that you're making this commitment to yourself to be a bit stiller for the next hour or so. Allowing the in breath to move your body as it needs. Maybe it's going to adjust your posture, open your chest. Maybe it's going to lift your collarbones to open the upper chest and let the out breath then just. Let everything go. And keeping everything nice and straight in the spine. Take a nice deep breath in, and as you breathe out, just drop the chin down towards the chest. So don't collapse the chest. There will be some space between the chin and the chest. And as you sit here, nice and upright, and you breathe deeply, you just feel that the cranium bones are just drawing away from the upper vertebrae. And that your breath is just offering you a little bit of traction. And the shoulder blades are weighting you down at the back as the head is weighting you down at the front. And the anchor is the pelvis, is really holding you firm. And the shoulders can really let go like this. With every out breath, just imagining the head heavy forward and the shoulder blades heavy at the back. And every out breath is an opportunity to release any tension from the neck and shoulders as if it's just draining away. 
And then keeping the chin down, just rolling the head from side to side a little bit. Keep the breath in your mind, in your awareness, as deep as feels comfortable for you. As you roll your head from side to side, just feeling into the side of the neck. And then finishing with the chin down. And when you inhale, it's like the inhale is going to lift the chin back to centre. Let's bring the hands onto the shoulders. As you breathe in, you can bring the elbows together and up, and then draw them back as the breath stays in at the top. And as you exhale, take the elbows back and down. Now let's just do a couple more of those. You can add the neck if it feels comfortable for you, really lifting the chest, taking the head back as you inhale. And as you exhale, drawing the elbows strongly back, squeezing the shoulder blades together. Inhale. Exhale, we're just waking up the upper back just before we move to stillness. Let's do three going the other way, inhaling, elbows back and up. Exhaling, the elbows together and down. And just for the next two, just concentrating on all the movement that's possible in the shoulder blades, upper arms and the chest. And just flushing all of that movement with the breath. And then just bringing the hands back down to the thighs, breathing into that space that you've just created, the space we're going to be predominantly working on this morning. And then gently opening the eyes. And we can move our bolsters now, come off our chair. We're going to do some cat and cow. You can actually do cat and cow in the chair if you prefer to stay seated. So if we're doing cat and cow on the ground, we're going to have the wrists uh, under the shoulders, the knees underneath the hips. And as I breathe in, I'll take my head and tail up, drop my chest to belly, squeeze my shoulder blades towards each other. And as I breathe out, I'll drop my chin towards my pubic bone, rolling my pubic bone in, making space between the shoulder blades, lifting the belly and chest up to the spine. I'm just going to keep doing that, rolling from the in-breath to the out-breath a few times. If you're on the chair, you can have your hands on the thighs. Just slide your hands back, take your head back, move your chest forward and squeeze your shoulder blades back. And as you exhale, slide your hands down to your thighs, up the pubic bone towards the chest and over the back of the body towards the back of the chair. And just continue. Breathe and stretch and just allowing yourself to feel into the movement of the shoulder blades, squeezing towards each other as you breathe in, moving away from each other as you breathe out. And the belly and chest opening towards the floor as you breathe in, and squeezing back in towards the spine as you breathe out. And just this gentle undulation of the spine with each breath. In and out. If the wrist gives you some trouble, we can always come up to fists. You can come down into the forearms. And then let's just sit back on the heels. If you're in the chair, you can just give yourself a gentle forward bend. You can open the knees a little bit in child pose. Just rest your Head on your hands. If this isn't comfortable, you can lie on your back and come your knees into the chest. Let's bring the hands under the shoulders and just press ourselves up. Okay, so we're going to move into the first a restorative pose. And this is like a fish pose. It's kind of opening the chest. It's really working on the um, pec muscles in the chest just to let them open and settle. So the most basic form of this would be to have just your rolled up yoga mat. You may need something under your head and you might find you just want uh, more support. So you roll your blanket over your yoga mat. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit in front of this 
pad, like and it's rolled up yoga mat, and it's quite close into me. I can always move it away from me if my lower back feels a bit pinchy. I need to make sure it's directly behind me because it's going to kind of support the whole of my spine. But with my legs bent and my feet on the floor, using my hands to support, I'm just going to roll back onto this yoga mat. And hopefully, if you're a bit taller, you might need two yoga mats. But the back of my head is held on the yoga mat. My shoulder blades are able to kind of slide off the sides of the yoga mat. And I can adjust my tailbone kind of to make the lower back more comfortable. If it feels like there's too much of a back bend in the lower back, just move away from the yoga mat. So there's more space between the bottom and the yoga mat. And then if you can, wriggle your shoulder blades down away from the ears, but you really feel that they're kind of supported over the sides of the yoga mat. And you can take your arms out shoulder height, you can bring your inner knees towards each other and touch. You could also do this pose with your legs straight if it's comfortable for your back. You may want a cushion under your head, you may want a blanket over your chest. You may want support under your shoulders. If you have any shoulder issues, it might feel too much to have your shoulders kind of suspended, in which case you can just Place the cushions under your shoulder, one cushion under each shoulder, maybe a cushion under your head, maybe the blanket rolled over the rolled up yoga mat right, for support. And just taking your time to find some comfort and ease in the pose, letting yourself wriggle a little bit and find the right position, and then kind of setting the intention to move into stillness for a few minutes. And it takes time for these poses to have an effect on the body. So it might be nice to use a mantra with these poses just to help settle the mind because often we feel a bit bored or a bit preoccupied. We might feel that it's difficult to settle. A nice mantra that you can use would be just repeating internally to yourself. So, with the in breath and hum with the out breath. So, it's so hum, the so the intonation going up, and the hum, the intonation coming down. And that's very soothing, it's like a wave breath. And it enables you, it might enable you just to stay present in this stillness. Allow your muscles to open to this support that you're giving them underneath you. You can set an intention to kind of encourage your body to really let go into the out breath. Let go into the gravitational pull. You might find that that's a more powerful way of practicing every time you breathe out. It's really kind of surrendering to the openness of this pose. And then I invite you to take three or four really deep, really beautiful, really soothing breaths, like your favorite breath. Really watching attentively for every little millisecond of the breath. 
very highly attuned to the effect of the breath on your body and your rest and your mind. Maybe three or four delicious, most beautiful breaths in the pose. And then preparing to move out of the posture. When we move out of the poses, it's quite important how we move out of the poses. We start by just bringing one foot flat to the floor and then the other. And then we would bring one arm over the chest so that we can roll very gently to the side. And then Take the end of the rolled up yoga mat and just move it so it's horizontal on your mat. And it can give you a rest for your head. And just pause here before you move. Your knees. If it was quite a big back bend, you probably want to bring your knees forward. You can bring them more forward. Tucked in if it feels better for your back, we can keep them kind of at an angle. Knees and hips in line, whatever feels good for you. And then we'll use our hands to press up out of this pose. So just use your hands, press into the earth, and come up very, very gently. And then just sit for a moment. Now, whoever's comfortable, maybe you're kneeling. You make movements that you might need to make. And then we'll move to the second little pose, which again uses this rolled up yoga mat. So it's already horizontal on our mat, and we're going to add the three cushions now. So we'll have one either side. We're going to lie back over this yoga mat with our hands in cactus pose. So the, the two cushions are going to support our hands. Move it down. And then we'll have another cushion for the head. So we've got this kind of triangle set up for the cushions. And I'm going to sit again where I started before. I'm going to have my hands on the yoga mat. So I want to end up with the yoga mat across just under the armpit so that it's going to be pressing into the bottom edge of the shoulder blade. I'm going to come down, I've got my elbows on it at the moment. I'm going to move my bottom away from it. I'm going to lie down. And if it's going to be coming out just under the armpits this yoga mat. So then I'm kind of back bending just the upper back over it. So it's kind of the bottom edge of the shoulder blade is going to be pushing in towards the ribs and up. So it's really opening this upper part of the chest, which might be, it might mean that it's too much of a back bend for my neck. That's where I bring the neck pushing in. And also doing cactus arms, if I did it without anything, the elbows might come to the floor, but the hands might be up in the air. So it might be just nicer to have the elbows and the hands supported on these cushions. And again, I can keep my knees bent, I can have the inner knees touching, or I can lengthen my legs away. I prefer this one to have the knees touching. So lower back is comfortable. There is an upper back bend. The chin is lifting up as if it's back bending, but the neck is supported on my cushion. So I feel quite nice. Now, if it was too much for my hands, they won't settle. Maybe I'll just take my hands out to the side. Or it might be that you just need a little bit of extra support under the hands only. Making your wriggles. Taking some deep breaths, finding that right position where you might be able to move into stillness. And as you rest into stillness, come back to the breath. So if there's any pain in the body in any of these postures, you, you just move. No one is forcing you to be still. 
the Christ the body is not ready to be still. And yeah, I'm sure we can challenge it to be still. And we know that stillness is good for us, ultimately. But it has to come when we're ready. There might be things we need to do to prepare for stillness. As you rest here, just feeling the openness at the front of the chest. And just feel that you can surrender your neck, surrender your shoulders into this pose. Letting go the back of the head and the lower back into this arch, the supported arch. And knowing that it takes three to five minutes for the fascial layer to kind of stretch and let go a little bit. Every now and then in the stroke of the other, you feel these little unwindings and you can let go a little bit more into the pose. And the breath really helps. Again, you can use your mantra, so hum. And the hum in particular, the out breath, allowing you to surrender to gravity so you just let go of all your resistance. Or as much resistance as possible, or you just melt into the out breath. You know. Whatever's right for you today. If these poses aren't right, then you can, you can feel free to come out of them. And then I invite you to take another three or four of the deepest, most sweetest breaths ever. Really loving and compassionate breaths for yourself. It's a very compassionate practice of bringing yourself support. self-care and self-love. And as you practice this more at home, you might remember the poses and you can hold these poses for longer if they feel better. So as we come out of the Posture now, we'll start with our hands, bring our hands down and just bring the elbows in and the hands on the belly. And then what we'll do is we'll just move the bottom down, so lift the bottom, move it towards the feet, then move the feet away and just roll yourself down until your head is supported on the yoga mat and your hands are on your belly. Take a deep breath in and out. And then once again, we're going to roll onto our side. 
yoga mats there for you to rest your head on. And very, very gently. When you're ready, you can press yourself up with your hands. And once again, just take a moment, sitting upright, to feel some awareness of what opening you may have created. So, we'll take the cushions away and we'll move the rolled up yoga mat out of the way. Now we'll bring the bolster back. So we're just going to do a little bit of breathing practice um, before we do the next restorative pose. I'm going to straddle the bolster. You can sit on the chair if you prefer. So again, just having the spine upright and the natural curves in the spine so you can really sit, palms flat on the floor. And so those first two have really opened up some areas of the lungs and we are going to actually do another pose to open up the sides of the lungs in a minute. But just having a pause here to just briefly look at the 3D expansion of the lungs, which is a really beautiful practice. So as you breathe in, we'll take each section on its own first. So the first time we're going to just look at side to side expansion of the breath. As you breathe in, your awareness is on how the rib cage expands out to the sides. So the rib, side ribs move towards the upper arms. And it's all with an in-breath, like the breath presses the ribs into the upper arms. And as you breathe out, it's like coming back to center. You can think of your out-breath as just the centering, coming right into the center of who you are or the center of your lungs, your heart space. So the first few breaths, you're just really taking your attention to this thing that's happening anyway. Side to side expansion of the rib cage and the lungs. You may find that you're naturally taking an ujjayi breath. The throat blocks a little bit, and that's fine. Maybe you're not, it doesn't matter. It can help us kind of really feel that connection with the pressing side to side opening of the lungs. And then we'll try front to back expansion of the lungs. Just a few breaths. As you breathe in, you feel the sternum moving forward. And also you move, you feel the spine moving back in between the shoulder blades, like you've got sharp spin, which is popping back behind you. That's both on the in-breath. And with the out-breath, you're just focusing once again on that coming back to the center. So a few breaths front to back expansion as you breathe in. Expanding behind you as well as in front of you. And as you exhale, just coming back to center. Again, using Ujjayi if you want to. And that out breath is if it's taking you to this kind of still point right in the center of your very being. in between those two points that you pressed open. Finally, we're gonna to do top to bottom expansion of the breath. So as you breathe in, you can feel the top of the lungs expanding, the collarbones lift and separate. And as you breathe in, you feel the bottom of the lungs expanding. And so you might be, have awareness of the diaphragm flattening out. And as you breathe out, coming back to that still point right in the center. Top to bottom expansion. And finally, we put all three together. For the next few breaths, we're going to concentrate on inhaling, expanding side to side, front to back, and top to bottom. And as we exhale, just moving your awareness back into that center point.
release the breath, roll the shoulders a little bit. And let's take the next restorative pose. So we'll have the bolster to the side of us. And I'm going to sit on my heels, but then sit to one side of the heels. I'll take uh, my foot out. So one foot out, one foot is just tucked underneath me. And I'm going to have the bolster right in towards my hip. And so one hip is down, one hip is up, and that's fine. We're going to go into a twist now. So I'm going to just move my hands either side of the bolster. So I'm kind of facing, my back hip is kind of rolling up and over. And I can feel like I'm lengthening the side. And I'm just going to try and bring my sternum towards the center of the bolster as I move my hand forward. And then I'll just drop my cheek onto one side. So if I, if you're really, really kind of super bendy, you might continue the twist and drop your head to the opposite side. But usually that's quite a lot more than a restorative pose. That's, you know, requiring some effort. But what we can do is if you're a female and you have breasts, you might want to kind of move them either side of the bolster so that it's real the center of the sternum. It might make it more comfortable for you to lie flat. So you may need to have a pillow on top of the bolster. And lying down with your cheek to one side. And just trying to rest, so finding a place for your shoulders to rest, where they can be happy. I like to squeeze the bolster in between, not with any effort, but just for that kind of action, the elbows are coming down towards my hips, and then palms kind of turned up and towards the bolster on both sides. Other people might like to take them out or up. Again, wriggling, finding the place for your chest and your hips to settle. And then moving into stillness, really settling the breath. Using the mantra. And if you're feeling like you're getting a bit chilly at this point, as we rest more and more, metabolic rate dropping, we're really going into rest and digest. You might start to think about keeping warm in these poses, placing blankets over you. If you're feeling chilly, then it's not going to help you relax and rest into the poses. And then taking three or four of the most delicious deep breaths. With all your awareness on those breaths.
Moving your body in a very gently, press yourself up using your hands. Maybe come to kneeling, get up straight. Taking a breath. And then we're going to do the other side. So you can feel free just to kind of switch your body around. I'm going to bring the bolster to the other side so that you can see. You'll start kneeling some space between you and the bolster, and you'll sit to the side of your heels. And you'll bring the bolster really close into your hip and liberate the top leg, the other leg stays kind of underneath you. The outer hip is going to roll up and over so that you can take your hands to either side of the bolster, really lengthen up and kind of aim for twisting the rib cage towards the bolster. It doesn't matter if it doesn't come all the way. But it might be comfortable if you have breath to like have one either side of the bolster, or it might be more comfortable stay a little bit sideways. So there's a certain amount of kind of finding your way with this pose, getting any more support you might need if it's too low down for you, having a pillow over the top of the bolster, something a little bit higher means that it's not so intense. Maybe a, a pillow over the breast area to give more support. Finding the space for your shoulders to feel comfortable. And then just settling down into this pose. And it might feel very different on one side. Often we're very tight on one side. Very common. You might have found a very nice, comfortable position on the other side, and then suddenly this doesn't feel so good. Maybe you have to do a little bit more wriggling on this side to find that kind of surrender into the breath. Maybe you just need to move and find some more support. Maybe you're feeling it in a different area. Just feeling yourself letting go. Into the And taking your final three or four deep
And then when you're ready to come out, just press in your hands into the earth, come up. And again, just sitting with the back nice and straight just for a moment, to let everything settle. Okay, so the final couple of poses, we're going to use the uh, chair as well. So we'll still use the bolster, put the bolster on your mat. And bring the chair so that all four legs of the chair are firmly on your yoga mat. And the bolster is near the front, near the two front legs of the chair and what you'll do is you'll sit on the bolster or you're going to have two cushions as well on the chair and you can move them kind of towards the front edge of the chair so you'll sit on your bolster and have your hands on the floor behind you and what you're going to do is you're going to move yourself so you're sort of 45 degree degree angle towards the chair and then keeping your bottom on the bolster and lowering yourself down with your arms, you're going to take your legs one at a time onto the chair. And then using the chair, pressing into the chair with your legs, you can wriggle your bottom around so that you're comfortably on the bolster. And then lower your back down on the bolster. So what I'm going to do now is wriggle my, my legs so that I can squeeze the cushion into the back of the knee, so the back of the knee is supported. Then I need to make sure that the bolster is in the right place. I don't want it too high up because then I've got too much of a back bend in my lower back, the bottom kind of falling, it's just uncomfortable. I don't want it too far forward. Then I'm doing the opposite and kind of turning the pubic bone up towards my ribs. I want it to be kind of under the sacrum, giving a lot of support. So I still get this kind of nice, supported back bend, a little bit of a back bend, or a little, it's just an inversion really, but I'm not stretching the back too much. So it's like a little just right position that you need to find, moving the bolster in towards you and away from you. And then kind of wriggle the bottom a little bit so you're flattening out the sacrum. Make sure the cushions are tucked into the back of the knee and that your heels are supported so you could have more cushions, more pillows. And then wriggle your shoulder blades nice and wide and away from the ear. Make sure the head's supported. You can take your arms out away from the body. Or you can bring the hands to the lower abdomen. That can be very nice and comforting. And cover your chest. And rest into this inversion, very gentle inversion. more of the wriggles out at the beginning. So that then you can start to settle.
kind of becomes easier and easier the more you practice and the further on we are in the class to just surrender to that breath and that stillness. Allowing yourself to completely let go into the earth. You feel these little ripples of unwinding. And then taking your four deep, deep breaths. Obviously, this is a pose you could hold for a lot longer. But we'll hold for our last delicious breath. And then to come out, I think opening the eyes is a good idea just to kind of orient you so that you can move without kind of falling off anything. And then maybe bring the hands in towards the body and just kind of stabilize. And you can either press down with your calf muscles into the earth, and that might give you enough strength to move the bolster out of the way, or to bring your feet to the front of the chair so that you can lift. This sometimes you can push the chair out of the way when you're doing that. So just taking extra care. If you move the bolster out of the way, and then yes, you're going to bring the feet to the front edge of the chair. And just to finish, we're going to cross one leg over the other and do like a pigeon pose. Probably you need to move a little bit further away from the chair. The further away you are, the less intense it's going to be. And obviously, if you're too close, your body won't want to go down, or you might kick the chair out of the way. We're crossing an ankle over the opposite thigh. And the other foot just resting into the chair. And you can press that knee away from you a little bit if you want, or you can just let it sink in towards your chest. And this is going to be a long hold. It's just to kind of unwind. Any tension in the sides of the sacrum. And then we can change sides, bring that foot back. And crossing the other ankle over. Again, if it's too intense for the knee or too intense, move away from the chair. If you feel nothing, move closer to the chair. You can press the knee away if you want to give an extra stretch. And you might find just doing it all by itself without you interfering, just lengthening the tissues on the outside of that thigh that you've got the leg crossed over. Releasing the foot back onto the chair. Very gently, you can work your feet down the side of the chair and roll onto one side. 
and very carefully press yourself up. We're going to move now into deep relaxation into your nidra. So I invite you to find a really comfortable deep relaxation position. Um, you might want to use a bolster under your knees. You may be practicing in a chair, in which case I invite you to have your feet flat on the floor and if you can take your chair to the back of the wall so that your head can be on the back of the wall, back of your head can be on the wall, <laughs> so that your chair is near the wall, that might help you rest in a chair. If you're on the earth, just make sure that you're comfortable and warm, you might want to support your head. And like I said, you might want the bolster underneath your knees. And you probably want a blanket. And if you need some deep rest pose. So make sure you're warm enough. You can always get a blanket underneath you as well as on top of you. Or if you've got duvet handy, put a duvet underneath between you and the floor. And then another duvet on top. Go all out. And then just rest your bones onto the earth. So you don't have to be on your back either for your deep relaxation. You can be on your side. You might want some pillows between your knees and ankles and hugging between your shoulders. This is good if you've got a cough or if you're pregnant or your back just can't settle. You'll need something under your head as well so that all the, the bones are in line. And uh, you can really rest like that. And come into your deep relaxation pose, whatever it looks like. I'm just settling in, making any movements you need to make, so that you can feel comfortable. And then, like with all the restorative poses, just preparing to move into stillness. Moving into stillness and just taking some lovely deep breath. Maybe you sigh the breath out. You know, we've done an hour of this practice of slowing down. It allows anything to come up to be let go of. So maybe you take a few sides now and you just really set the intention for letting go of this tension. Letting go of this busyness, this tiredness that you've been carrying. I mean, we have to do stuff, we have to be busy, we have to show up in the world and we have to carry on in times of crisis. Sure, there's no way we can get out of that. But we can offer ourselves the chance to let go of some as we go along. And that's where the beauty comes in. You know, no one's going to have a life without tension. No one's going to have a life without stress. No one's going to have a life where it's just easy. That doesn't change, even if you practice yoga every day. It doesn't change. Life still happens and it's hard. But you just make some space in between it all so that you can kind of release as you go along. Stress comes in, stress goes out. Stress comes in, stress goes out. So you're just becoming this channel of energy coming in and out. So you're just giving yourself that out breath of space. Just sigh out. And just feeling your bones, the bolster on the earth, feeling the contact point between the back of the body and the earth. Feeling that they're weighted and they're drawing down deep into the core of the earth. And then bringing your awareness onto the spot between the eyebrows. That space. Taking all your attention to that space. It's like, it's like a tunnel, it's an opening. It's vast. I'm just going to settle your attention there for a moment. And then moving your awareness to the space in the front of the throat. 
just above where the collarbones meet. And then take your awareness to your right shoulder, then your right elbow, your right wrist, your right thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and little finger. And then moving your awareness back up through the wrist, elbow, shoulder, and back to that little soft hollow of your throat. And take your awareness to the left shoulder, the left elbow, the left wrist, the left thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and little finger. And then moving your attention back through the wrist, elbow, shoulder, back to that soft hollow at the front of the throat. Take your awareness now to the center of the sternum. And then over to the right chest. Back to the center of the sternum. And over to the left chest. And bringing it back to the center of the sternum. And then moving your awareness now to your belly button. And then moving the attention to the pelvic floor. Then the right hip, the right knee, the right ankle, and then the right toes. One, two, three four and five. And then back up through the right ankle, the right knee and the right hip to the center of the pelvic floor. Then move your awareness to the left hip, left knee, left ankle and the left toes. One, two, three, four and five. And then back up through the left ankle, left knee, the left hip, and back to the pelvic floor. And the attention moves back to the navel, back to the center of the sternum, back to the front of the throat, back to the space between the eyebrows. And here you can just settle all your attention down into the space in between the eyebrows. vast point beyond space and time. Melting into the space. Then letting your awareness settle in the heart space, that center point. Point at the center of the ribcage, the center of the lungs, the most sacred space, your inner sanctum, all awareness on your heart space. The chance to listen, any messages your heart wants to deliver. Your chance to just bathe in this sacred energy, healing light. And a chance to set any intention or offer any prayer.
Coming back to the awareness of your breath. Allowing the breath to deepen. And maybe if it suits you at this point with the breath, you could repeat the following affirmation inwardly to yourself. As you breathe deeply, come back into your body. I am at peace with myself as I am. And with the world as it is. I am at peace with myself as I am. And with the world as it is. I am at peace with myself as I am. And with the world as it is. And just allow that to hang in with you, hang there with your breath, hang in the air as you come back to life. You can feel free to rest and stay in your Shavasana. You can feel free to drop off to sleep. Or you can feel free to roll over and come up whenever you want. Thank you for practicing.